Hello students, this is unit 4 uh, chemical fuels. Uh, we are now dealing with the fractional distillation of crude oil in the present lecture. Yeah, it's going to the next slide. The crude oil uh, is also called as black gold and it's a dark brown or viscous green liquid which is obtained uh, from the dead remnants of plants and animals, planktons, bacteria which are uh, deposited hundreds and millions of years ago and they are nothing but several hydrocarbons which are deposited in the earth's crust or the ocean beds. Due to changes in the climatic uh, conditions like pressure, temperature inside the earth's crust, they decompose naturally to oil and low hydrocarbons. So petroleum occurs along with salt water and natural gas uh, below the rock layers. And these uh, petroleum crude, which are categorized as liquid fuels, are obtained by drilling through a metallic driver where you can see the metallic driver, I'm showing the arrow, this is the metallic driver and here you have the drilling ring and this will sink the pipes deep into the earth's crust and you can find this uh, impervious rock above which you have the salt water or the brine and over which you have the petroleum crude and then you have the natural gas. So you can see the different layers or several layers on the earth's crust, impervious rock followed by the brine and then petroleum and impervious rock and then the shale a rocky layer and the earth crust actually this crude oil is pumped out mechanically which i'm going to show in the next slide through the compressed air pumps and they're separated uh, as you have seen here the average crude composition uh, the carbon is around 80 to 87 percent hydrogen 11 to 15 percent sulfur around 0.1 to 3.5 percent and traces of nitrogen and oxygen and the process of refining of petrol in the oil refineries, what you call as refining of petroleum, uh, consists of uh, three steps. The first step is separation of water, where you have the brine water, uh, the brine solution, that salt water separated from the crude oil, and removal of harmful impurities, which include sulfur as the main content, along with the chlorides of sodium and magnesium in traces. And then the third step is fractional distillation, which involves separation of hydrocarbon crude oil into different fractions. And this is the diagram, as I told you here. And here you have the oil or gas, uh, which is actually flown here through this pipe. And then it is actually uh, uh, through the mechanical compressor where they're compressing some air here, they're compressing some air here and then this oil, gas and water will gush out of this and slowly enters into the separator. In the separator, they get separated into gaseous state in a different um, tower where the gas is collected and you have the brine water which is separated into the water disposal and then you have the crude oil which is collected in the crude oil container. So this is an, a setup which uh, will exactly show you uh, how actually the oil, gas or water is uh, collected from the is collected from the pump which is digged well into the uh, sunken well into the deep of earth crust or the oceans and then they come out uh, due to the compressor air which are, which you are sending from here and then this is actually separated the, where the flow is actually I've shown you where the flow is taken this way and the gas is separated here the water is separated here and finally crude oil is contained uh, is sent into the container separately and then uh, this is our uh, Hindustan Petroleum uh, Corporation. This is one of our most precious asset in India. So this is the setup which are used for refining of petrol and this seems to be very complicated, not so simple as we study in our diagrams. The largest reserves were found offshore in Mumbai 
Krishna Godavari Basin around 40% and Assam around 27% of reserves are present in India. Then we go into the next slide. Yeah, let us take up the next slide. Uh, so here the separation of water is a Cottrell's process where uh, you are passing the crude oil along with the water that is brine water in between two highly charged electrodes and the function of these electrodes is they would attract or um, they would allow the uh, water particles to coalesce to form bigger water droplets. They would attract these water droplets and combine to form. Coalesce means unite or combine to form large droplets of water which are separated from the oil. And then you have the removal of harmful impurities like sodium chloride and magnesium chloride which can be uh, which can uh, cause uh, corrosion of the equipment and they can be simply removed by dehydration methods uh, and by uh, uh, desalting. Uh, the next uh, important uh, uh, harmful impurity is sulfur which can be treated with copper oxide and the copper sulfide which is resulted can be separated by filtration. The next part step 3 comes as fractional distillation which is the most important part. This fractional distillation is based on the principle that different hydrocarbon mixtures or different uh, solvents which are present with the different boiling points can be separated based on their boiling points. So the higher boiling point fractions would be obtained first followed by the low boiling fractions. And uh, I'll show you the next slide uh, then come back to this. Uh, fractional distillation slide. Here in this area I'm using a okay, ferritic pen. Here you have the crude oil which is allowed to pass through this preheater which is maintained at 400 to 450 degrees centigrade in this area. And this crude oil which is almost about 350 to 400 degrees centigrade the temperature why are you actually giving so much of temperature to these uh, crude oil because all these hydrocarbons are held by covalent forces between hydrogen hydrogen you may have the bonds and you have bonds between carbon and carbon so to break these bonds and obtain the simpler fractions we have to give so much of temperature to this so at at and above 400 degrees centigrade those fractions which have high boiling points would be coming down here they are collected here and the first fraction which you see is the residue the carbons which are contain more than 70 more than 30 i mean 32 35 or 40 are coming out as residues what you call as bitumen which are used for road making tar mm -hmm. and then for the roofs roof making and road making and then the remaining fractions of oil slowly go through these areas what you call these areas these areas are called as uh, actually this is called tray this is called downspot this is called tray and this is chimney this part is called as chimney and this chimney is actually covered by a loose cap and then what happens is at different temperatures this oil vapor would slowly go out through this chimney through this loose cap and then go through this chimney and then loose cap and at different conditions of temperature they start condensing down here they start condensing down and they would be collected at different outlets right so based upon the different temperatures they are condensed at different areas so these keep these gases keep going above and above through these chimneys and then condense back through the down spot so this is your down spot so condense back through the down spot, condense back through the down spot and so on. As you see when you when the gases keep moving above, they have low boiling fractions. And those which have the different boiling fractions will be collected at different outlets. 
uh, let me give the example of the lowest boiling fraction that is carbons with C1 to C4 like, like you can take the example of methane, ethane, propane and butane. They are usually obtained at less than 40 degrees centigrade which are collected through this outlet. So you can see this example of LPG liquefied petroleum gas where you have the carbons ranging from 1 to 4 methane, propane, methane, ethane, propane, butane. Then around uh, the temperature ranging from 40 to 120 degree centigrade, you have the next fraction where you have carbons ranging from C5 to C9. So the carbons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, around 7 to 9 carbons. And this fraction of petroleum is obtained around the temperature of one, uh, 40 to 120 degree centigrade. And this can be used for petrol or other automobiles. And then you have the third fraction here. Uh, actually, we have so many other fractions, but we have taken only few important ones. Nafta, the temperature uh, for this is around, uh, um, it may be 120 to 180. And you have 9 to 10 carbons. And this is used in preparation of chemicals and dry cleaning industry. Then you have the kerosene where it's obtained around uh, 180 to 250 or 40 degrees centigrade. So the number of carbons are ranging from C10 to C16. And you all know that kerosene can be used as a domestic fuel as well as jet engine fuel. I can see the range of number of carbons here. And then the next fraction is diesel, which is uh, obtained above uh, 250 or 280 degrees centigrade. And the number of carbons ranging from 14 to 20. And this is well used in diesel engine fuels, railways working on diesel engine fuels, railway engines working on diesel engines. And these are the number of carbons. And then you have the lubricating oil, which may be obtained uh, around uh, about 320 and so 380 degrees centigrade, uh, containing about 320 to C30 carbons. And they are well used in uh, lubricating oil as wax and polishes and the next is fuel oil or heavy oil which is used which is obtained maybe uh, uh, for around 400 or more and then this is uh, used in fuel as fuels for ships and factories and uh, the last one as i already mentioned this is the highest boiling fraction above 400 degrees centigrade you get the residue of carbon that very heavy oil and which is used for road making and roof making so in this entire setup of fractional distillation column what you call as fractionating tower the important concept involved is distillation where different boiling fractions are obtained at different temperatures and the high boiling fractions are obtained first that is high residues of carbon then at different temperatures these vapors are cracked at different temperatures and based upon the cracking uh, of uh, gaseous uh, uh, vapors obtained at uh, like for example 40 to 120 degrees centigrade mostly it is C5 to C9 and uh, mostly around 120 to 180 you have the uh, naphtha and then what 180 and above you get kerosene so these are the different fractions obtained so our main focus is the distillation of different hydrocarbon fractions based upon their boiling points and the crude oil is sent to the retort or the preheater at 400 degrees centigrade what i already told you why are heating to so much temperature because the hydrocarbons have to be broken into simpler chains uh, as they have coal and forces in between between them and those which are broken to different fractions will be obtained at different levels based upon the changes in the temperature so the 42 uh, less than 30 you will have the uncondensed gases like c1 to c4 and then the next fraction is uh, petrol naphtha kerosene diesel lubricating oil fuel oil and uh, these are obtained at different temperatures all these and what is the main uh, uh, theme behind this is you have the movement of these cracked vapors through the chimney and then you have through the chimney which is covered by the loose cap and in the trays you might have some molecules here you might have some molecules here gaseous molecules in the tray which would be condensing at different conditions of temperature these gaseous molecules you have the the positions here which would be condensing at different places that is uh, what happens in the tray area 
and then these chimneys which allow the vapors to go up and condense back to through the down spot and then you have the outlet for it hope you understood this concept of uh, fractional distillation coming back to the previous slide as you have seen the crude oil is heated up to 400 degrees centigrade uh, where all volatile su substances evaporate and the hot vapors pass through the fractionating column and then you have the number of uh, trays and uh, chimneys which are uh, trays which are covered by the chimney with a loose cap and the condensed gases would come down to the down spot and the fractions having high boiling points and the fractions having high boiling points will be condensed first at lower trays whereas the fractions having low boiling points would be condensed at higher trays that means gases at the higher uh, i mean to say uncondensed gases first followed by the lower number of carbons and then going on increasing the number of carbons as you've seen here and we have seen the application part here where are they used And then coming to the composition, as we have already seen in the um, fractional distillating column, uh, the boiling range of uncondensed gas that's methane used in LPG, mostly as an industrial fuel or domestic fuel, then petrolimeter, and it is used as solvent in uh, dry cleaning industry, then the gasoline or motor spirit or petrol, which is obtained at around 40 to 120, uh, consisting of 5 to 9 carbons, and it's well used in uh, uh, as a solvent as well as motor fuel the highest demand fuel nowadays is gasoline the next is naphtha or solvent spirit which is obtained around 120 to 180 degrees centigrade in the fractionating column consisting of around 9 to 10 carbons it is also used as a dry cleaning agent then kerosene oil about 180 to 250 which consists of 10 to 16 carbons and as a jet engine fuel to prepare the laboratory gas too uh, and then you have the diesel oil which is obtained as a fraction of a, around 10 to 18 carbons and a temperature of around 250 to 320 then it's used as a diesel engine fuel and heavy oil as I told you it uh, it is used in uh, preparation of uh, uh, it, it's also used as a fuel for ships and then uh, asphalt or petroleum coke which is obtained above 400 degrees centigrade or around 400 degrees centigrade and it's used for making waterproof um, uh, sheets roofing sheets as well as road making and uh, among all these we see that the three fractions of petroleum are very important among them are the gasoline or petrol then you have kerosene and the diesel because these three are more important fractions in demand. So we have already seen in the table column. Now let us see uh, uh, gas, the calorific value of gasoline. As you have seen that gasoline or petrol is the hydrocarbon obtained by breaking up heavier hydrocarbon into five to eight carbon chain. Then it is petrol obtained around 40 to 120 temperature. 120 degrees centigrade temperature, its calorific value is around 11,250 kilocalorie per kg. So this is having the highest calorific value. So it is in high demand and it's highly volatile and inflammable, most commonly used for internal combustion engines. Then come to the diesel oil, which is obtained as a fraction between uh, 10 to 18 carbons and around the temperature 250 to 320 degrees centigrade. Its calorific value is around 11,000 kilocalorie per kg and it's mostly used as a fuel for diesel engines. And the last one, kerosene oil. It is a lengthy chain hydrocarbon consisting of C10 to C16 and it's obtained between uh, 180 to 250 degrees centigrade and its calorific value is almost similar to that of diesel oil. And uh, the only uh, difference here is it does not vaporize easily because of its high boiling point. And then uh, this is most commonly used in domestic fuels uh, as jet engine fuel and for making oil gas. Thank you.